word of God is serious. Can you say amen? You don't play with it. You don't mock it. You don't reject it. You don't manipulate it. You obey it. Welcome to the program, Warning. This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen, President of World Ministries International. Today in my television studio, I have a special guest. I have producer Veronica Neufer of the 11th Hour Politics television program. She has actually interviewed me on four programs. So today it's my turn to interview her. Now before I get to Veronica, and I, I appreciate her, she's a good Christian, but she's on uh, actually two secular television programs, and I'll let her introduce uh, uh, what those programs are called and, and what the purpose is. But I want to read you just a couple little quotes. This says, New World Child. Quote, every child of America entering school at the age of five is mentally ill because he comes to school with certain allegiances, allegiances toward his founding fathers, toward his elected officials, toward his parents, toward a belief in a supernatural being, toward the sovereignty of his nation as a separate entity. It is up to you teachers to make all of these children well by creating international children of the future." Unquote. Chester Pierce, Department of Educational Psychiatry, Harvard University. Did you know that we are under direct assault in the United States of America today? even in elementary and kindergarten right now. They are brainwashing your children into humanistic, atheistic, evolutionist, totally anti-Christ mentality, philosophy, and theology. Let me read you another statement. This is from New World Order Religion. This was from the World Parliament of Religions. And it said, they meant to sign a document called Global Ethics, better known as Ecumenicalism. They included Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Jainists, Jews, Neo-Pagans, Satanists, Wiccas, Brahmas, Interface, Taos, Sikhs, Unitarians, and the list continues. Within the document, you find the term, quote, not authentically human, unquote. The bottom line of tolerance and who will not be tolerated is anyone who says their God is the only true God they are not authentically human. And would it be murder to kill someone who is not authentically human? I hope you're understanding this terminology because we're getting ready to enter into the greatest era of persecution that civilization has ever witnessed. Laws are being changed in the United States and created to persecute the church. And if Christians don't take back the leadership of this nation, this nation is damned. It's going to collapse. It's going to be part of the new world order. Already the world is divided into 10 regions. And ladies and gentlemen, Obama doesn't want to stop illegal immigration. That's why he sued the governor of Arizona. He doesn't want to stop it. America is already part of region one made up of Canada and Mexico. Let me read you also out of the Constitution of the United Nations and its global agenda for the environment, economy, and family. It says, quote, it was not until I went to the UN conference in Cairo, started reading the program of action, which is the document consisting of the new social, moral, political, economic, and ecological ideas to be ratified, which is the document consisting of the new social, moral, economic, and ecological ideas. At the conference that I realized these moral negative behaviors originated at the United Nations. It's when I realized the United Nations is a world government. Part of the process of moving the world into the world government is to change the frame of reference, break down social values in order to create a new world order. Our government no longer supports the Christian heritage that America was founded on and is working hard to replace our values, way of life, and constitution. Current legislation will bear this out. That's why Obama is getting away with shredding the constitution and the Bill of Rights. He is a plant by members of the New World Order to destroy the sovereignty of America and move us into this one world government as prophesied 
written, predicted in the book of Revelation. Judeo-Christian values represent the old world order, which they want to replace with the new world order, which is humanistic, and changes the Judeo-Christian family structure, replaces our way of thinking with values-related behavior. Understanding this philosophical difference made me understand the new world order's agenda of abortion rights for all, acceptance of diversity, homosexual rights, and the empowerment of women in the United Nations. And it goes on and on. Those countries who oppose the program of action are threatened by both the U.S. State Department and the World Bank with financial blackmail. As you know, I go to nation after nation, meet with the government, the president, the prime minister, the vice president, different politicians, and they are telling me in nation after nation that Obama is threatening. If they don't accept homosexuality, they withhold aid. Ladies and gentlemen, he sent $23 million to put abortion and Sharia law into the new constitution of Kenya. We need to take back America or America is going to come under the authority eventually of the beast, the Antichrist. America, instead of being the greatest nation on earth for freedom and prosperity, will be one of the worst persecutors of any nation on earth as we have the technology to track down every person alive. Once again, I have with me producer Veronica Neufer. And I think that you're going to enjoy this interview. Veronica, welcome to the program Warning. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. It is such a pleasure to be on your show. I have great respect for you that you're willing to um, come out and say things that need to be said. Well, Veronica... We did our own background on you, and uh, that's why you're sitting in that chair, because I have respect for you. And uh, together, uh, God is forming coalitions, and I'm glad that I, I finally accepted your invitation. We did four fantastic programs, and uh, together, God is bringing people together. As you know, as you work in unity, mm -hmm. uh, that's what Pentecost was all about, working in unity, and the power of the Holy Ghost exploded. And uh, we need to unite together with those in, in media that are Christians, those in the church, those in politics, those in, in law, both lawyers and, and lawmen, uh, those that are professors. We need to do what we can to represent Jesus back, Christ, and take back America. Now, Veronica, you are the producer of the 11th Hour Politics television program. Is that correct? Yes. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, um, the reason why I wanted you on my show so much is um, to talk about the Ten Commandments is because um, Christians um, in, in churches, they tend to focus on um, part of what they choose to take from the Bible, okay. and they forget some of this stuff. They forget about the things that you talk about, which is we need to be involved in politics. So 11th hour politics, um, if you can tell by the name, the, we are in the 11th hour, I believe. Um, Christ comes at midnight. Uh, and so we're in some trying times, and we need to be involved in politics. We needed to be involved in politics in the 10th hour and the 9th hour, um, I believe. So I address issues. Um, I try to bring... Um, what most people would say would be common sense is um, the Bible and what's going on in our world today together uh, the best I can. Um, there's so much to talk about. Um, you know, sometimes I wish I could have uh, several shows a week, you know, if I had time. Um, but uh, um, there's always uh, something to talk about. Well, I think it's excellent. And, and you have primarily a secular off audience. Yeah. Which I believe, again, is excellent because mm -hmm. uh, it's a form of evangelism besides warning. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're, you're reaching out to uh, uh, both Christian and non-Christian. Yeah. Now what, you're also the producer of another program. Yeah, it's called News and Views, and that's really where I got started. It's um, uh, the Yamhill County Republicans, and we're really conservative there, so it was, um, it's easy to, you know, bring God into it. You know, we pray um, in the meetings. Um, when I'm in the, when I go to the Republican meetings there, it's, uh, I feel like I'm almost in church. Um, we all were people there that we believe in life, and we believe um, in the Bible. We believe in the Constitution. Um, so it's a, um, it's a conservative show, 
and so we can talk about uh, pro-life issues. Um, I can interview, you know, our conservative politicians, which thank God we have um, conservative politicians there yes, in our county. Yes. And um, um, Gail Atterbury from uh, Oregon Right to Life. She um, is somebody I enjoy interviewing. Um, and then um, I always try to put a biblical spin on things in, in politics as we should be doing. What did you think of some of the paragraphs that I read from when I was at my desk? What did you think of, of some of those statements like, uh, if we believe in God, if we believe in Jesus, if we believe in the Founding Fathers, uh, we're not authentically human. And would it be wrong to kill someone who is not authentically human? What do you think of that statement? Um, well, I think that those are things that we should have been on top of as a church. And um, it seems like um, we haven't been. Everything, I, I've noticed that everything that um, the government now calls politics, the church all of a sudden says we're off limits. And I think that obviously the church needs to be um, number one in defining what a human being is. And uh, we're not. And we're, as, as you say, we're going to see the consequences from that. The abortion has... That law, now it was, it was a crime until 1973, abortion and homosexuality. But we have already killed 55 million people, and I call them people, with that title called abortion. And they try to call the baby a fetus mm -hmm. to take away the humanness out of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, abortion, homosexuality, the Bible says these are sins of abomination mm -hmm. because actually idolatry, immorality, killing the sin, innocent, and dividing the land of Israel bring judgment on a nation. Do you have people on your program that uh, discuss abortion, Veronica? Well, Oregon Right to Life and all our conservative representatives, they um, will do that. What's hard to do is when you get um, some of the politicians... Um, um, trying, trying to get them maybe to um, talk about God to the degree that you would like them to. And um, I have to, um, you know, thank uh, um, uh, Glenn Beck, if I can, just by him bringing attention to that and then making it a popular subject. It's actually opened the doors for the politicians that I have um, talked to to talk about it more. It's um, um, ra raised the level to, you know what, we need to start talking about this. Yes. Um, so we, we talk about abortion. Um, um, Homosexuality? A, a little bit. And, and, and here's why. Uh, it, the, the politicians are, are scared to talk about certain things. And, it, and, and, and I, I hate to say that. Um, now they might touch on it but when you get to a certain point it requires like a like a show because they they are afraid they're going to be under attack and I don't want to um, I, I don't want to point out one politician or, or the next that I've interviewed but um, there is um, um, let's say a, a, a fear of being intolerant um, even amongst conservatives well I've been invited and, and I myself uh, get to speak with politicians a lot. I have a lot of them on this program. Mm -hmm. I've been invited to uh, different uh, uh, Republican caucuses and things like that. In fact, I went to the grassroots several years ago. Frankly, Veronica, I got up on the floor. Mm -hmm. and, and I was one of the few ministers of the gospel invited. Good. But they, they realize this television program and how much I'm active in trying to get godly men and women uh, back in every every aspect of society. But I got up and I said, frankly, that uh, I identified myself and I said, frankly, gentlemen, uh, I'm tired of uh, some of you politicians coming into our churches, yeah. giving some quote out of scripture or throwing out Jesus once or twice and think that the church is gullible enough just because of your statement. You want them to vote for you, but then uh, once you get voted into office, you, you seem to be ashamed of Jesus Christ, neither do you back mm -hmm. uh, Judeo-Christian values and beliefs. And I just want to tell you, I'm tired of your hypocrisy. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to back men and women that are really uh, backing Judeo-Christian values and beliefs, and others, I'm going to help get defeated. And I'll tell you what, uh, it got very quiet at that caucus. But I, I thought, wow, I'll never be invited again. Well, the next day, I, they actually asked me to uh, be one of the speakers at their Sunday service. Good. Wow. So uh, the reality is, they want to get voted into office. And I think even though some of them didn't like what I said, because I challenged the hypocrisy. Uh -huh. At the same time, I don't think they wanted to make an enemy because I am on radio and television. Yeah. But uh, I encourage people all over America to make sure, uh, I, I tell them don't vote for uh, a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, but vote for those, in other words, don't just be on one party line, but vote for the best man or woman that will truly represent Jesus Christ. And as, as far as pastors and bishops, uh, I, I tell the church, and again, I, I speak in large uh, forums, crusades, churches, conferences, uh -huh. television, radio, and I tell them, though, flat out, if your pastor is not in the battle, if he's not dealing with the issues and dealing with sin, That's right. if, if he's not involved with trying to get the best men and women into government, if you don't realize what I'm sharing at these conferences, mm -hmm. and uh, I wouldn't give your pastor a dime as he plays church and sings songs like in Germany and we are losing our freedoms and laws are being created to enslave you, your family, and your grandchildren. Church, the time for playing games, as far as I'm concerned, Veronica, is over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, but again, uh, I'm the president of World Ministries International and, and, and uh, the program warning, so to speak. And so... Uh, well, I'm glad your voice is out I'm there. Not, I'm not uh, as concerned as, as somebody that can take me off uh, uh, my own program, so to speak. Oh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like anybody can take me off my own um, program. Um, there's so many issues out there. There's so many issues out there. Yeah, um, and... and uh, which one do you tackle? Well, we, we tackle all of them. Yeah. Whether it's Islam, uh, whether it's abortion, homosexuality... Uh, Same-sex marriage, mm -hmm. I know I uh, challenged on the air the other day, uh, even, even the governor mm -hmm. of the state of Washington called for the archbishop to excommunicate her. She's supposed to be a Catholic, and uh, she has pushed this fight for same-sex marriage. Yeah. And I think the church needs to use its ecclesiastical powers, yeah. and yeah. the governor of Washington state should be excommunicated, because yeah. she doesn't seem to care about her own faith. Again, our founding fathers understood the blessings and curses mm -hmm. that came on a nation mm -hmm. if you deny Jesus Christ and, and the laws of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we went over some of those sins of sodomy in our last program on your program mm -hmm. on the founding fathers' views. And like Thomas Jefferson called for castration. Now, uh, and then I went into the areas where uh, why we have to take a strong stand to try to keep it out of law Mm -hmm. Because the Bible then goes into, uh, and we produce the scriptures, not only judgment on the individual, but the society, country, nation that tolerates it. Yeah. I think the saddest thing that I have heard um, when talking to politicians is that when they get elected, we send them there to the Capitol. And if we um, elect a Christian, we're like, all right, they're a Christian. But then uh, the church um, as a whole, and, and even, um, even I forget sometimes, uh, to pray for the politicians, our, our leaders in there. Now, I pray a lot more because I um, understand, um, you know, hearing back from them. They say that the, 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 the capital is a very dark place. And they go in there, and they, with a completely different mindset going in there, and when they come out, it, they kind of got to, you know, clean themselves off. Amen. And, and it's so important that, that Christian leaders and pastors get their congregation to uh, pray for the leaders because they're going to... Um, be in um, Satan's territory, and without prayer, they're going to stay in Satan's territory. We need to pray for our leaders, both in politics and the church. Uh, we also need to pray for uh, leadership in the home, mm -hmm. uh, in the schools. Uh, again, God's delegated authority on earth. But we have a responsibility as a church, either to rule and reign, to occupy, or to be led by the pagan. And that's what the Bible says so clear. If we're not salt, we're good for nothing but the dunghill to be trodden under the foot of men. 
So either the church leads or evil men lead. Mm -hmm. and, and what most people don't realize is evil men are leading. They're creating laws to not only uh, stop us voicing God's view on behavior, mm -hmm. but they're making laws then to incarcerate you and I. Uh, they're trying to dissolve the sovereignty of America and move us into a new world order, Veronica. The church has got to wake up. I see the church in the same spiritual condition and apathy as Christians in Germany before yeah. Hitler totally became a tyrant and killed six million Jews and turned on the Christians and killed 12 million Christians. Yeah, it's my understanding a lot of the Christians and I think even the Jews too, they, uh, they thought the Messiah was coming um, when they saw the horrible conditions and they just sat back and you know, waited for their savior to return. And um, when he didn't return, they uh, got persecuted, the uh, ones that didn't you know, tend to left the church, and so we have a, a Europe that uh, is pretty um, secular now. Totally, totally. President Barack Hussein Obama embraces all religions. Abortion, homosexuality, same-sex marriage, one world government. He's an enemy of Israel, demanding that they give back the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Obama mocks the teachings of Jesus and her morality. My constant prayer is for Obama's salvation, or that God will let Psalm 109.8 come to pass. Let his days be few, few, and let another take his office. If we lose our freedom in America, it will be the Christian's fault. We're in serious trouble today. Uh, we're being led by a man that is totally anti-Christ. He can say he's a Christian all he wants. I'm not judging him. God has judged him. The Bible has judged him. We did the Ten Commandments. Obama mocks Jesus Christ, the teachings of God, the Beatitudes. He says all religions are the same. He backs abortion, homosexuality, same-sex marriage. He's no Christian. And I'm not saying it. The Bible says it. Yeah. The Bible says it. Yeah, we have a pretty warped view of Christianity. So we must, we yes. That. We are in serious trouble it's like Germany with Hitler leading it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I agree. So we are in, we are in serious trouble. Uh, America is part of, of 10 regions. In other words, the world is divided into 10 regions, and region one is Canada, America, and Mexico. That's why he allows open immigration, uh, illegal immigration. He doesn't want to close the borders. Our rights are being constantly taken away, Veronica. What's your opinion? Well, um, you know, we have a business. Um, I have a couple TV shows I do. And uh, I know that uh, our First Amendment right is uh, going to be taken away soon. And I'm going to ha have some choices to make. I mean, I'm going to make the choice that God has me take. And I don't exactly know what that's going to look like. But I think people are going to need to start understanding they're going to have to start making choices and seek God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength so they know how to respond to that. And I say that because this uh, issue with the contraceptive, yes. um, that's a First Amendment um, issue. And uh, if the church can't uh, wind up pressing, getting that out of the arena, the First Amendment issue, um, then there's going to be more First Amendment issues like the um, uh, just plain free speech which I think he, he's already passed a, a hate crimes bill yes, that just yes, hasn't quite yes. come into effect. So, um, you know, we might... Uh, They're trying to stop us from expressing our religious beliefs. Yeah. And uh, this nation was founded on Jesus Christ. Uh, the founding fathers, statement after statement, proved their faith. They were, op they were strongly against uh, homosexuality, abortion, uh, we, we, we shared in the last program uh, their statements. Uh, our own states in the United States, many of them called for the death penalty. I'll tell you what, uh, the Bible warned us where right becomes wrong and wrong becomes right, and that's where we're at today mm -hmm. in the United States of America. Veronica? Yeah, you know, um, certainly we just talked about homosexuality, and now if you stand on that, you're considered evil. Good is evil, evil is good. And, uh, you know, I, I can really feel, um, in fact, the, the, uh, the pre-election of Obama, uh, you know, in 2008, you, you know, 
Christians without even a big, strong sense of discernment could feel that cloud of deception in the yes. air. Yes. And, and it's still there. And, you know, I keep on waiting for people that wake up and say, we have a big problem here. And, you know, certainly people are seeing Obama as a bigger threat, but some people aren't at all. Um, it, it, it's scary. And, um, you know, when we see the Antichrist come and take power, you can really see how easy he's just going to waltz in, um, deceive people. And, um, you know, you're already seeing the dividing lines where some people are going to fall for it, many Christians. And, um, uh, and I think that's why um, pastors, as you said, need to start um, preaching on, on the book of Revelations, on deception, on right and wrong, so they don't get mixed up between the, the gray um, and, and show people there is a white and black, there's a right and a wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, Veronica Neufer, again the producer of 11th Hour Politics television program. Strong woman of God, as you can see. We need more women like her. Ladies and gentlemen, we love, no matter who the sinner is, whether it's an adulterer, fornicator, liar, homosexual, but it separates you from God. It brings destruction. It brings judgment. And Jesus is returning again to stop the rebellion because rebellion is killing people all over the world. Millions of people are dying because of rebellion. God's going to stop the insanity to bring peace on earth forever. God bless you. I'll see you next time. The word of God is serious. Can you say amen? amen. You don't play with it. You don't mock it. You don't reject it, you don't manipulate it, you obey it. Do you enjoy my warning television program? If you do, I need your help. Judgment is escalating. The cup of iniquity is becoming full for the United States of America. The science of judgment is sweeping the world. Every nation is being judged. The New World Order, Islam and the 12th Imam, the Mahdi, World War III, the mark of the beast, the plagues of God, over two billion people dying, Armageddon, and the return of Jesus Christ. Please, won't you help me sound the alarm? Partner with me. Even a one-time gift would help. Telephone now, 360-629-5248. That's 360-629-5248. 360-629-5248. Thank you, and shalom.